and Road to Avonlea actress Sarah Polly also participated in the protest. Oh, it's every, every time you hear Mike Harris speak about it, he puts it down to economics, but is there no economic advantage in people having a decent education? This is likely to meet Sarah Polly face to face, pitching something quite different. I might as well take a stab at that one in a million chance that what I'm doing is going to make a difference. Don't go away. The hearts of Canadians in Road to Avonlea. Now Sarah Pauly is heading down a different road. I talked with her back in January. Here's another look at the new role Pauly is playing. Ever since I was really young, I always knew, you know, that I wanted to change the world, right? Look this way. <laughs> But before you can change the world, you have to get its attention. Nice Actress Sarah Pauly is certainly a 16-year-old who's had a lion's share of public attention. That's come from 10 years in front of the camera. Even when she played roles in high-profile movies like The Adventures of Baron Munchausen, Sarah knew acting wasn't going to change the world. You all right? I remember even when I was five or six, right? I really was persistent with my parents in letting me get into this. No. The thought that I would be an actor when I grew up didn't even enter my mind. It was just sort of something I wanted to do for fun. And it sort of remained like that and still is. And I don't think I ever had any big transition where I decided I'm not going to be an actor. This isn't what I want to do with my life. I just sort of always knew that it, it wasn't my thing. Like, it was just sort of something that I, that I dabbled in and thought was sort of nifty. <laughs> I'm not going to babysit Franco Francis anymore. Parts that other actors would die for, like this one in Adam O'Goyan's Exotica, Polly wins, even though she's too young to see the film. Her take-it-or-leave-it attitude towards acting probably gets her more parts than she realizes. What has any of this got to do with me, Dad? I don't, I don't think I've ever been bad, but I've never, I've never been a good actor, like, I mean, or, like, had, like, this great talent and done all these different things. I just sort of have taken sides of myself at different times and, and sort of toyed with them, but I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't think it's, uh, you know, a great talent that's in my blood or, or anything. But to the Canadian public, Sarah Pauly is already in our blood. We watched her grow up on Road to Avonlea. She became a role model to thousands of young girls. I've come to talk to you about a most important matter of the heart. You should confide in me. It was love at first sight. It'll be fine, Jasper. All you have to say is I do. Davey, come back here. I want to come with you. But off camera, she didn't feel much like a role model. She was coping with debilitating scoliosis and, at the age of 11, the death of her mother. I was wearing a body cast and my mother was dead and, and you know, my brother and sisters didn't, didn't live with us and it was kind of actually weird. I was, I was pretty uh, alone, um, but, uh, and, and I was working on, on Avonlea that year and uh, it was a pretty miserable year for me um, in terms of you know, scripts, there were, were a lot of scripts where I cried about my mother being dead. I won't say anything about that, but um, it was, it was, it wasn't the best of years, so, but when I was 13, um, you know, I sort of came out of it a bit, and I became so happy and so grateful for every moment that I had where I wasn't depressed. <laughs> and so happy to be out of it that I just, I sort of just developed this just total joy for this real love of, you know, life and books and people. Daddy. The most important person in the world is me. Polly decided to leave the show, leave home, and have the necessary surgery to fix her back. But the toughest thing to leave behind was her Avonlea image. It's funny, like, I, I have a feeling with myself that I'm myself anywhere, right? With anyone I can, you know, I feel comfortable swearing and being crass and just totally 
myself. <laughs> um, but, I mean, like, there's this thing that happened yesterday where we were doing this scene and I was smoking in the scene. And I was standing with the director and we were just swearing our heads off and laughing and being really rude. And there was this little girl at the end with her father of the driveway. And the father brought the little girl to watch, like, to, and to, to meet me. And she was like eight or nine. And as soon as I, and I, I never expected this reaction in me ever, but as soon as I saw her, I just, I put out the cigarette and I was really like polite and really kind of like who I am on Avonlea. And I was sort of like embarrassed by myself to myself, you know, like, cause I thought, oh, you know, why do I have to do that whole little sweet thing? But I guess I do feel some kind of a responsibility to be like really uh, pure or something. Her latest part is as far away from Avonlea as she can get. A new Canadian film called Joe's So Mean to Josephine. She's playing a 22-year-old in a difficult sexual relationship. Action. Oof. Okay. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. That's for the sidebar, right? Well, the, sorry. That's where the photo can be. Right. Okay. Well, you're just going to have to trust me, okay? <laughs> sorry. Okay, David. Okay. No. <laughs> It's very sort of shows a very gritty, raw picture of a relationship, and it's really uh, sort of different than anything I've I've read before. It's it's kind of cool. Hey. And uh, I was really sort of like just entranced by it. I really wasn't planning on working at all. It was as usual with me, just like the individual project that sort of made me really want to get involved. You okay? Yeah. And this winter she'll be seen in the CBC series Straight Up. This may not be her style, but this is one role where she gets to act her age. You have to leave the acting world to find out what Sarah's really passionate about. It's about doing good, helping out, and wanting to change the system. Sounds a bit corny. Sarah thinks it does too, but that's not going to stop her. Her desire to make things better in her community has taken her to socialist organizations, to food banks, to the Ontario legislature, and to the streets of Toronto to get some answers and some understanding about how the real world works and doesn't work. What she's found is a lifelong role for herself as social activist. Hi, I was wondering if you'd like some information on how my caris is I was wondering if you'd like some information on how my caris is hurting children in the province with this cuts to social services and welfare. Okay, no problem. Her brother Mark Polly, a former actor himself, works for the NDP and finds he now has a leafletting partner in Sarah. I'm here on behalf of St. George, St. David NDP, and I was wondering if you'd like some information on no, how my care No problem. No, sorry. Hi, I'm here on behalf of St. George, St. David NDP. It was the election of the Conservative government in Ontario and the deep budget cuts it brought down that shook Sarah into action. Everywhere she goes, she sees something that needs to change, somebody that needs help. I'm here on behalf of St. George, St. David, and... I don't really understand how people are, are, are as inhuman as to sort of like, you know, let people, you know, my age, I see people my age, like around the corner, they're, they're, I go to bed every night in this really warm apartment, and I know, you know, you check the temperature, and you think, oh, those five people I saw on the street now, are they going to die while I sleep? And they don't have to be there. Sarah helped organize a demonstration at Queen's Park in Toronto on the day of the government's throne speech. It was a big day, a life-changing kind of day, both for Premier Mike Harris and for Sarah Pauley. I know what I saw, and, and that was that there was a standoff at one point where they wanted to storm the legislature. But there's a three-line deep riot squad and OPP on horseback behind us cutting off the hundred of us that were there from the rest of the crowd. And there was just a stare down between the cops and, and us. And, uh, and then I guess they got the cue to push us off the steps and they just started whacking heads. And it was the scariest thing I've ever seen. I still have dreams about it. It was very uh, surreal, and um, and then this this one this one cop uh, bashed me, I guess, in the stomach. 
and um, and then I got elbowed by another one in, in the jaw and two teeth on the side came out and it wasn't uh, the most pleasant experience of my life but um, I learned a lot. Did it change the way you feel about the place you live in? Yeah, definitely. It looks a lot grimmer to me now. And I think I'm I'm Canadian and <laughs> I don't think it can happen. I still don't, I can't believe it can happen here. You know, and I guess it can. And it's pretty depressing to be 16. Like, I mean, it's so stupid to always say my age, but you know, I'm 16 and this is, I, I'd like to be really hopeful about future of where I live and, and I'm not really and I'm just trying to put as much work as I can into changing it so that I th that I can be. That includes finishing high school. She thinks she'd like to study politics at Oxford. Whether politics is the best place to try and change the world, Polly isn't sure. She's torn between following her activist's heart or her brain, a familiar tug of war in the Polly family. My mother was driven, like, you have no idea. And if she had been more interested in politics, she would have made huge differences, you know. Like, she was just so focused and sort of, you know, knew millions of people and, and was really wanted, laughed a lot, and she had all this energy and enthusiasm and was great. And, and, uh, and my dad is, is much... <laughs> much less like you know driven and more sort of like sits back and likes to look at things right and sort of likes to um consider and he's he's probably more detached but still a pretty emotional person and and um he's he's really sort of more intellectual i guess and and uh and i've got this weird thing in me that i've got both Sarah has just 10 more high school credits to go, but the last ones seem the hardest. Life conspires to keep her away from her alternative school in Toronto. My teachers are kind of surprised by me this year because last year I was pretty diligent and this year I haven't been going in as much as I should. Some of my assignments have been late and that's really rare for me. Like all through school I was really good about it. And when do you want me to have the elements of style read by? Is that like... I usually give you about six weeks. I've now given you... Uh, well, no, no, well, not much more than six weeks. So okay. why don't you try and do it before the uh, end of the month? Okay. At the same time she tries to shed the Sarah of Avonlea character, she's found a way to make it work for Sarah the activist. Jan Diamond. Hi, Jan. Sarah Polly. Right. Thanks for coming. Invited to attend the gala opening of a redesigned Bay store in Toronto, Sarah initially declined. She hates the star schmooze trip. No, 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 no. I'm taking a picture of you. I just need you to put okay. your arm around. Okay. But when the Bay offered to send a thousand dollars to her favorite charity, she showed. Did I mention that I'm underage? The money went to the anti-poverty coalition in Ontario and Sarah brought her politics to the party. Are you having a good time? Hey, yeah. How about you? Oh, I just buy the drinks. You never oh. have a good time when it's your party. You know? Okay, right. I was, uh, so what are you, you're making a movie now, right? Yeah. How about you? What are you up to? Well, I do the marketing and advertising for the Bay. Oh, so, really? Uh, so, uh, is it true, like that bay, bay workers aren't unionized, or? Oh, yeah. No, we got uh, several stores in Ontario unionized. We've got uh, oh. quite a few stores in B.C. unionized. How about this one? No, it's not unionized. When, when adults talk to me and say, you know, it's so refreshing, you know, to know someone who actually has opinions about things your age. Talk to any 16-year-old. They have pretty strong opinions and pretty well-informed opinions. We all have got, like, tapes of Woodstock. It's sort of this thing you look on back on, you think, you know, they were supposed to change the world. What happened, you know? I sort of was thinking a while ago that it was like, um, these people had great ideals and everything, and they went through this whole process, and, but now they all have houses and pools, and my generation just sort of decided to skip to the pools, right? <laughs> like, instead of they know they're going to end up there anyway. And um, I don't know. They, it, it seems that there's, 
this this feeling that there's a real feeling of kind of inertia, like like everyone knows what's going on, but incredibly cynical, like so bitter. Excuse me, I went to St. George, St. David NDP, and we're just trying to. Um, I don't know very many people at all my age that are active. It's not because I'm better informed than them. It's just maybe I'm stupider and I am more optimistic. I don't know. I'm not. I don't think that you know we're going to be able to change things overnight, and it's going to take a lot of work. But I don't see the point in thinking that and then doing nothing, because then things definitely won't change, right? So I might as well take a stab at that one in a million chance that what I'm doing is going to make a difference. Yeah, really. Cool. <laughs> okay, Thank you very much. Bye. Take care. Since we first brought you that documentary, Polly tells us she's more committed than ever to social activism, but she hasn't given up on acting. Her movie, Joe's So Mean to Josephine, opens next month.